And when it comes down to serious bodily harm, it is that harm which may require prolonged hospitalization, rehabilitation, disfigurement, scarring, that type of deal. Uh, so me walking up to you in a store and saying, I don't like the way you look and socking you in the nose is not necessarily deadly force. You know, are you going to be permanently disfigured, scarred, maimed, prolonged hospitalization? Probably not. But if I take a, uh, a, a long pipe or a baseball bat or something and I break your kneecaps with it, you're probably not going to die, right? I mean, people don't die from being smashed in the legs with a, a baseball bat, but could you say that you would have require prolonged rehabilitation, hospitalization, disfigurement, scarring, and so forth? Well, the answer would be yes. So when it comes down to, well, yeah, the guy only has a bat or he only has a pipe or whatever, only has a hammer in his hand, uh, so you can't shoot that person because they don't have a gun. Could someone cause permanent disfigurement, scarring, and so forth with a hammer? People get killed with hammers all the time. So uh, if you're a concealed carry person, what you have to understand is that there are going to, there may be times when you are justified in using a firearm because a firearm is deadly force. But then again, there may be times when you are not justified. And if you leave yourself in a position where all you have is your empty hands or a gun, uh, you're really handicapping yourself. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, uh, you know, you kind of touched base on uh, when someone should, you know, be able to defend themselves. Uh, can you describe kind of a little bit more in depth? Well, yeah, you, there's there's three questions that you have to ask yourself, and you have to ask yourself these really fast, quick, in a hurry. And this isn't just me making this stuff up. This is me based upon... 30 years or so uh, of training and experience, having gone through the police academy, becoming a certified peace officer, uh, doing you know constitutional law, and and uh, I went I would became a police officer in Ohio, so I took Ohio state law. But generally, you find across the United States that the justifiable use of force and justifiable use of deadly force are essentially the same, uh, and that's ability, opportunity, and intent. Mm -hmm. Before you can legally use justifiable deadly force against someone else, you can whip out your gun and point it at someone, and whether or not, and whether or not you press the trigger, if you pull out a gun and point it at a human being in a threatening manner, you are using or threatening the use of deadly force. Uh, you don't have to wor wait until someone's launching bullets at you and say, well, I can't shoot him because he hasn't fired his gun yet. <laughs> No, it doesn't work like that. But ability, simply this, do they have the ability to do harm to you? Does the person possess a firearm? Okay. Does he have the opportunity? Uh, are they in the same you know, area as I am? You say, well, of course, they, if they have the ability, they obviously have the opportunity. Well, not necessarily. Uh, if you see a guy standing across a parking lot, you know, holding a machete or holding a knife, and you're 157 yards away, can you smoke that guy because you said that you were in fear for your life? Probably not. But the, the biggest one, and I tell people this when we teach our classes, we have a class called Armed Living, and uh, Armed Living is all about basically being an armed citizen and your responsibilities and rights as an armed citizen. And I say this, you, you, you pull off at your favorite gas stop, whatever, it doesn't matter. You go inside, and there's a police officer standing there, and he's filling his coffee cup at the counter. And right at that very moment, he has the ability and the opportunity to kill you. He's got a gun. Check. He's where you are. You're in the same geographic area. Uh, so he has the ability and the opportunity to kill you. So could you whip out your gun and shoot him? Well, no, obviously. Why is that? Because he's not displaying the intent to do you harm. The same thing goes with quote, you know, concealed carriers or open carriers or constitutional carrier, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, possessing a gun and being in the same geographic area as someone else does not indicate intent. And when it comes down to it, when, when the truth is when a jury is examining a use of force situation, when they did the Michael Brown thing uh, in Missouri and when they did the uh, Trayvon Martin thing in Florida and every other one that you never heard of, wh what they're examining is they're examining all three. Okay, did the person have the ability? Okay, check. Opportunity, check. And the big one is intent. What was the intent of the person? You know, if they pull out a gun and say, give me all your money, okay, check. We understand that. Uh, if they pull out a gun, they walk into a Walmart or a building and start shooting the gun randomly at people, there you go. Uh, 
if you hold up your hand and you say stop, and instead of stopping, they keep coming towards you, what did they just do? They just demonstrated intent. Because let's face it, everybody in the Western world knows that this means stop, right? Mm -hmm. If you just wanted to ask somebody what time it was and you're walking towards them and they threw their hand up and said stop, would you keep coming at them or would you say, oh, hey, man, I just need to how to get over to, you know, Second Street or whatever. Yep. Uh, and and that's something that's really simple. You know, the whole universal stop sign, I can show that too. I can stand in front of a jury of 12 people and say, what does this mean? And all 12 of them will say it means stop. Say, okay, my, you know, my client or whatever put his hand up and said stop. And the, the victim in, you know, in question kept coming. You know, would you do that? And you say, well, no, obviously I wouldn't do that. Exactly. So it's understanding and being able to explain and articulate why were you in fear of death or serious bodily harm. And that's what you have to be able to do. When it comes down to it, you have to be able to look at you know, a judge and 12 people and say, and they're like, well, why did you feel it was necessary to pull out your evil super blaster death, you know, death killer 2000 and shoot this poor innocent man on probation? And you say, well, because of this. And uh, you know, if you're going to carry a gun, if you're going to, even if you're not going to carry a gun, if you just keep one at home, if you ever think that you may be called upon to use a firearm to defend your own life, you need to understand that because you can't do it and then make it up later, uh, or you can't make it up on the scene. Uh, you've got to know beforehand what your rights and responsibilities are.